Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to Thermomix Singapore. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I'm Fiona here. I'm Ginny. And today we are showing you uh, Oni Tart. Oni Tarts. And Oni with Shoe Pastry. So yeah. we are doing two variations today. Yeah, you love Oni? Oh yes, I love Oni. Who don't love Oni? But no, yes. Oni normally we eat it in the, the small little tart form or the Oni paste, oni the Teochew style. Yes. But today we are doing something a bit With different. a twist, right? Yes, correct. Okay, so uh, we are going to start out with the... Uh, so before we start, we would like to thank our sponsor for today. Okay, we have the uh, whipping cream, Passant Breton, which is from France. Okay, and also cowhead. Cowhead is a, a very good uh, milk, which is 100% fresh milk, uh, natural, without the uh, GMO. Okay, and it's from Australia. And the cows are free mm. range. Yeah. So they roam freely yes. in the field. And the taste is excellent, I tell yes. you. You should, you should try it, right? And also for my uh, tart, I'm using the Passant Breton uh, unsalted butter, which is amazing as well. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so um, I'll let you introduce your ingredient first for the tart. Yes, so uh, the recipe, I'm using half the recipe from the uh, cookie dough, sweet uh, short crust pastry, right? We have the unsalted butter, sugar, uh, egg, half egg. I'm using about 30 grams of the egg today, all right? So a pinch of salt and uh, flour. Uh, we, I'm using the uh, plain flour or the... Uh, and uh, what do you call it, all purpose, okay? So that is a medium range uh, protein uh, level. You don't want uh, too high or too low gluten for this one, all right? And also uh, vanilla, uh, I'm using vanilla paste, okay? So, oh, sorry. So my vanilla paste, I have already added to my beaten egg here, okay? So let's get started. I will remove all these to the back, so as you can see. Okay, so let's uh, draw out the uh, wing scale. So, so what makes we have the inbuilt winging scale, which we can draw out immediately. Okay, so make sure it's uh, zero. Okay? okay, so for this one, um, you can just add everything in, okay? So, uh, but for, for this recipe, actually call for icing sugar. So, the wonders of Thermomix. It can help you meal into powder, okay? Icing, uh, icing sugar, all right? So, this is custard sugar, okay? I'm, I just need uh, 50 gram, okay? So, I'm going to meal it. So, only 15 seconds and at a speed 10. Fifteen second. Speed ten. Okay, that's fast, right? You don't even uh, uh need. To buy uh, icing sugar, you just use your termi to meal it, alright? So this is the icing sugar done, right? Okay, so we are going to add in the uh, butter. Okay, so this butter already uh, weighed 100 grams of uh, uh, unsalted. Uh, plain flour, 185 grams. Add in a pinch of salt. And then the 30 grams of the beaten egg. Alright. So see the speckles of the, that's the vanilla extract. Okay, we are going to add everything in. So make sure the icing sugar is all incorporated. So next, we're going to, uh, just 20 seconds, we'll do super fast. We don't want to uh, melt the butter. Hmm. All right, 20 seconds at a speed of speed 5. Okay. 
什么？好。So get a pastry mat, okay? Ta-da! Isn't that fast? 20 seconds? It's even faster compared to doing manually when I still need to slowly pinch it. Yes, and you worry about the heat yes. from your palm, from right? Palm, you will melt the butter when you do it traditionally. Yes. So, ta-da! Right, so we're you. going to do clean. So we are going just to mix it gently. Okay, you don't have to really knead it just to combine into a uh, well combined, okay, into a texture, smooth texture. Okay, just uh, so that you don't see any white specks of the flour. Okay, so that they are all the uh, Ingredients are incorporated. See the little one. So you just need to make sure it's all combined. Okay, next. So I'm going to uh, roll it into uh, a tin sheet. Okay, which is of about uh, two to three mm thickness. Okay, so I'm going to have this of a uh, levering ruler. This is. A thickness of 3 mm okay so otherwise you have to like eyeball it like you know the thickness okay so this one I'm going to roll it into a, a tin sheet then after that we are going to freeze it, freeze it okay if you have time you can uh, put it into the fridge right but if you are in a hurry you can put it in the freezer to speed it to up, speed it up. yes right. So you can always how you roll it, uh, a roll, any kind of rolling pin that you have at home, all right? From the middle, two palms, roll it upward, and then come back in the middle, roll it downward, okay? So you keep on continuing. So using two pieces of parchment paper will prevent uh, the dough from sticking, you see? I can just remove it and take a look and check on the thickness anytime, all right? So you don't have to worried so this uh, sweet short crust pastry is very versatile uh, you can use it for any uh, sweet uh, dessert you can use it for mango mixed fruit anything okay so it's a very uh, Wonderful recipe. We can also do chocolate tarts. Yes, of course. So I'm going to show you after a while uh, how it looks like. Okay, it's still a little bit thick. See, mm. uh, you can see my the ruler next to it is still quite thick. So just a little bit more. And then I'm going to chill it in the freezer. Okay, so yeah, still a bit thick. Yeah. Okay, while Jeannie is rolling, I will show you the yams. Yes. Thank you, Fiona. No problem, because we need some time to steam the yam. Uh, maybe you tell them. Maybe you tell them why are we adding some purple color to it? Okay, these are the Chinese yam, right? So we are adding some purple yam to it to. Um, because the purple yam actually contains a lot of a uh, lot more nutrients. Purple sweet potato. Yeah, purple, sorry, purple sweet potato <laughs> contains a lot of uh, nutrients like beta. It has an antioxidant as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yam also reduce help us to reduce in anti inflammation. Okay, right, I'm happy, right? Can you see the thickness? Uh, yeah, it's quite yes. thin now, so I'm just going to chill it. 
you can uh, cover it with the uh, parchment paper, with your pastry mat. Okay. okay into I'll the freezer. See you in a while. For how long do we need in the freezer? Freezer. Then I'll totally find the picture. Okay, so for the yam, I'll add in the pandan leaf. This is to have, it, so that the yam, when it's steaming, it will absorb the aroma from the pandan leaf and make oh, it more pung. Okay, you okay. So it's up. See, so I've already filled some water here. We are going to steam the yam. So we're going to steam it for 20 minutes at Varoma temperature at a speed 2. Two okay, ma? Yeah, thank you. All right. So we shall let it steam now. So I'm going to continue with my shoe pastry. So let me set this aside. Okay. So for shoe pastry, I have here with me flour. 100 gram, butter 75. Okay. For eggs, I will need uh, 160 grams um, of eggs. So it's about three eggs plus a bit because each egg is about 55 to 65 grams. So you can crack your egg measure here and the additional that you need to top up, you can actually break it in a separate bowl and you add it in. But do not throw this away because you might still need it to add to your to your dough to create the correct consistency for the shoe pastry. So we have some almond flake here, so I can decorate the top of it and some icing sugar. Okay, firstly we need to melt the butter and water. So butter. <laughs> so butter, what I need 150. Let me go to scale. One hundred fifty grams of water. Yeah. All right. So let's melt this. Oops. Sorry, <laughs> it's not locked. So we are just going to bring it to a boil without boiling for too long because we do not want to lose the water content in it. Otherwise, the percentage, uh, the proportion will be different. Mm -hmm. So let's boil it for five minutes. At hundred five. So it's very fast, right? It's only uh, five minutes, right? Yeah, just five minutes for the water to boil. Okay. I just need the bubbling for the water. I do not want it to over boil yeah. for too long. Okay. Yeah, otherwise my hydration level would drop. Drop, right? Mm. Yes, we don't want to lose yeah. it, right? Because how should pastry actually puff up in the oven? What is the leavening agent in it? It's actually from this water. This water in the shoe pastry dough itself, you will, mm. well, once you put inside the oven of 200 degrees, it will immediately create a uh, steam. It will change to steam. And this steam actually puff up the pastry. So we cannot lose too much water content. So for the shoe pastry, uh, you are using the oni paste as well? Yes, yes, we are still using the same paste, but of course I will tweak it a bit okay. because yours is for the task. For the task. Right. So mine is for shoe pastry, I need to make it a little bit finer. Lighter, Lighter version, version. Right. Yeah, otherwise it will be too gelat if you eat yeah. too much, right? right. Yeah, wow, so I can't wait to see what, what, what you're adding in, in. <laughs> and how's the taste like, right? Are you excited? Yam shoe pastry. Yeah, do type in uh, like and share our Facebook Live, yes? And uh, share with everybody about this uh, wonderful uh, yen tart, uh, mm. oni uh, tart, and uh, shoe pastry with a twist, right? 
I can share and uh, tell everybody. So about well, just now, um, my um, yam and the uh, purple sweet potato are steaming. So yeah, I added. So I added uh, three pieces of the pandan leaf to give it a very nice uh, fragrance. And also on the uh, top of the varoma dish, I have added uh, the fresh uh, ginkgo nuts. Okay. So the ginkgo nuts also give you antioxidants as well, anti-inflammation value, all right? But uh, do check with your doc doctor before you eat, all right? So this fresh uh, um, ginkgo nuts, what I did to it is that I removed the shell and the skin to it. I cut it into half, remove the stem. The stem inside is it's the one bitter. That the bitter, There's a bitter right. taste. Yeah. So if you don't want bitter taste, make sure that you removed it, all right? And you can actually uh, add a bit of sugar. I actually added a teaspoon of sugar mm. to give it some sweetness to the ginkgo nuts. So right? the sugar we mix it to the ginkgo nuts, yes. right? And then you steam so it. So I steam it. I do not need to rinse it away, the sugar. Uh, no need, no need. Oh, okay. So and you also give it a very nice glaze and shine to it. Mm. Yes. I love ginkgo nuts. Me too. Every time when I eat the oni, yeah. the yam paste, I will try to <laughs> eat for the ginkgo. Yes, I will have a lot, right? You were like, extra. <laughs> I put extra. by myself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. One more minute. Let One me more see. minute. What's the temperature? Oh, this fast. It already hit to the boiling point. Wow. Okay. Just do a quick check from the hole here. Be, Be careful, careful when you open. Yes. Yep. Okay, so now we mix in the flour. Mix, huh? So now we mix it. So at what speed, Fiona? I mix it at speed three. Oh, okay. Yes. So it's like a gentle mix, huh? You yeah, don't need gentle to blend mix. it for too long, right? Because mm. now I'm mixing the flour together with the butter and the water. Oh. Okay. After that, we have to cook the dough. Okay. Sounds good. It's so good, right, with Thermomix to cook the shoe pastry. Otherwise, you stand on the stove. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, like, the kids yeah, and then, is it there yet? Is it there yet? Yeah, yeah the kids there. there. Hmm? Wow. So, you see, now it's actually well mixed. Let me just do. Mm, okay, right now, it's just mixed. I haven't put a dough yet. So, I'm going to cook it now. Until I see a thin film that's formed at the bottom of the mixing bowl. Okay, so let's cook it for five minutes. Okay, five minutes, 90 degree. Speed two. Okay, now it's speed two, right? Mm. So this thin film that actually will, that will form at the base of the mixing bowl will tell you that your dough is cooked already. Oh, yeah. okay. So this is the one of the key points that you must look out when you're doing a shoe pastry, be it in the thermal mix or in, on the stove. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, when you eat, then you're like, eh, yeah, under cool the dough. dough is so you now, can right? taste the flour, the doughy like, taste yes, in the shoe pastry. Know, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Then after that, we need to wait for it to cool down, and then we can add the egg. Mm. How's our yam doing? It's um, uh, 11 more minutes. Oh, yeah. okay. So I already start to smell the aroma of the pandan, the yen in the studio. Yeah? I hope you can smell it too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you will if you cook it. <laughs> so if you do try to our, our recipe and cook it, do take the more mix. 
Yes, it's yeah. economics. So we know that you enjoy the recipe yes. and share it with your friends, yeah. right? The wonders of uh, thermomix, right? So now it's auto cooking by itself. I do not need to be on the stove, stirring, mm. checking. Yeah, this is the wonder of it, right? I can do yes. so many things. So we can clear up the table a bit, huh? <laughs> make it nice, nice first. Yes. So I'll be using two piping tip. This is the, the one that I'm using for the dough. We need piping bags there as well. So this will be for the only whipped cream later on. Oh, I eight zero seven. You can also use a smaller size if you have. No need to be exact the same. Yeah, yeah. This is a really a, a huge one. You can use a smaller one if you like. Yes. Uh, this is uh, a uh, this is eight zero seven. Yeah, this is eight zero seven. I can't remember the number on the top hand here. Uh, we will check and get back to you on the number for the tips. There's, 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 there's too many tips inside the, in the shelf when they, when they sell it. Yeah, yeah, actually you, for shoe, actually you don't need also can. Yeah. Or you can actually just cut a hole yes. here on the piping bag and use it. Or even you can have the star shape as well to have some design, yeah. the lines on it. Mm, yes, for well, mm. eclair or the puff. Mm. So, nine more minutes to our uh, yam. Okay, so later once um, our yam uh, are cooked, make sure that it's uh, softened as well, right? So, you can use a fork to check the doneness, alright? You want it to be soft. So what we are going to do is uh, instead of the uh, onion paste that we add oil or shell oil, oil, yeah. But today we use it for pastry tart. So we are going to use a uh, butter. butter. So this is like what I said, my favorite Passam Breton uh, French butter. Okay. So I use uh, fifty grams of the butter. Okay, and the milk is hundred gram, and sugar is a uh, six uh, sixty gram of the uh, pasta sugar. Okay. You can use a fine sugar, custard sugar, yeah. And you can even adjust the sugar level to suit your lightness, okay? Mm. Yes. So it's pretty uh, straightforward and simple. So we can always adjust our own sweetness. Yes. What, what, what I like about uh, home baking is you are able to adjust the sweetness, right? And also like if you like family like ginkgo nuts, you can put more. Yes. If you don't like, you can or you can put other things like pumpkin paste, pumpkin mm. puree, right? Or sweet potato, right? Mm. How is it going, Fiona? Yep, it's looking good. The dough is soft. It's cooking well. It's cooking well, looking good. Yeah. It's cooking for me somewhat. That's the best thing. Yes, you, you know what I about, like about Thermomix when it's cooking? Or cooking my uh, rompa, I just go and watch my K-drama. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because when you fry the rompa in the tomorrow it takes uh, quite, quite, quite a, quite a while. Oh. You auto stir for you. you, don't need to be on the stove. Right. And, stuff. and the best thing is what? You don't have an oil-free kitchen. Yes. You don't have rompa splashing all over your yeah. <laughs> Okay. Okay. See, can you can see that the dough is very soft and glossy now. It's well cooked. You can see there's a thin film at the in in at the bottom. You don't scrape that off because that one is uh will be hard. So that we will just uh, let it cool now. We just let it cool down to below 50 degree, then we slowly add the eggs in. Why do we have to wait for yeah. 50 degree? Why? Uh? Hmm? Why we can't add it you now? You can't add it now. Yeah, you know you have cooked scrambled egg oh, with your dough. Okay. Yeah, because the temperature is high, so we need to cool it down to below 50, then we can put the eggs in. So mm. below around 50 degree, once you add in, temperature will drop slightly, but it will not cook the eggs. It will actually blend in well together with the dough. Mm. Okay. So just let it 
So how do we see the temperature is below 50 yeah. degrees? How do we know? I don't have a thermometer here. Yeah. So how we know? Thermometers will tell you what is the temperature of this bowl. Wow, cool. Yes. How awesome is that, right? You see, now, the, now it's green. Green means it's chill, it's cool. Yeah, it's below yeah, it's 60, cool, it's, it's not below. hot, right? So once I put the bowl in, it will change to red. Red means it's hot. Yes. And there's this little number here on the temperature gauge that is showing now is 75 degree. So you can check the temperature of your pot, your dough, based on this. So let's put it outside here to let it chew. How long do we have? Um, five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. Okay, shortcut method. Just let me... Let it slowly turn and cool down itself. Which one? Which one? Five minutes. Oh, okay. I'll just put five minutes without any temperature. At a spoon speed to let it slowly stir and dissipate the heat from the dough so that it will cool down faster. And remember, MC off so that the steam and the heat can escape from the pot. Wow. Okay. It's pretty frozen. Okay, today, uh, while waiting for the only four more minutes, uh, I'm just going to show you uh, what uh, this is the classic tart ring that we are using. Alright, so the diameter is 8 cm and the thickness here is. Uh, 2 cm okay mm -hmm. so it's 8 cm by 2 cm all right okay. so this is the very classic one ah. okay but of course you can use the buy the perforated kind with the holes mm -hmm. which uh, allow more even distribution of heat yes and yes. it's evenly true correct so uh just stick to what you like you can try which mm -hmm. one or uh, i can also use other kind of tart ring the class well. yes yeah. with the 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 group yes yeah. that's you right you can use what you have at home Okay. So um okay. Just now I put it in the freezer. Okay, so uh it's a little bit cracked at the side, but it's okay. So we are just going to use this portion, alright? So um my tools are here, right? So remember my levering ruler. So if it's too thick, okay, when you take out from the fridge or the freezer, okay, we just put in about like 20 minutes in the freezer. If you put in a fridge one to two hours. When you take it out, if it's uh, too hot, uh, don't fight with it, okay? Let it rest, be gentle, alright? Okay? So what we are going to do is uh, roll it out, roll it out to the thickness again, if, uh, okay? Roll it out to the thickness. So if you let like, say, if this is too long, you can actually cut it, no problem. I'm just going to this part. So you kind of like gently press it, press it, gentle press, gentle press. Massage it a bit. Yeah, like like a like gentle soften massage. Soften a bit, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because now it's having uh, hard, hard joints. Yes. <laughs> so we are going to, you know, a lot of TLC yeah. to your dough, to your pastry. Because if you were to press it down hard, the dough will crack. crack. Yeah. yeah. So now we are trying to soften it a bit before we mold it into the mold. Alright, so same thing uh, from the center. You roll it up again. And then center all the way down. Okay. I'm at 65 degree. Okay. So um how do you do it? when you're using this plastic ring, okay? When you cut out, right, you need to be bigger. There are a few ways to do it. You can actually um, use a knife to cut it out. Maybe like 2 cm uh, ring bigger. So if this is uh, 8 cm, so you want to cut out with a circle of like 12 cm, right? So that you can fit it in. I'm going to share with you a very good uh, hack. If you own a mini server, the thermal server, the cover, 
is excellent to cut it. You see, it's about two cm. The size is just it. nice. So good, right? You don't yeah. have to buy extra cutter. I keep extra things. Yes. <laughs> Okay. So you just need to cut it up like this, press it down. Okay. Yeah, okay. So you can dance a bit of uh, the flower on your scraper. Okay. So uh, even though your circle is not uh, perfectly round, it's fine. Okay. Okay, so since our uh, Oni is calling us to attend to it, so uh, we shall take a look at the dance. So when you open up, open up the uh, Varoma cover away from you, depend from the hot steam, right? So look at our beautiful window at the top, and then we are mm. going to oh, yeah, need to get a down. For it. So you can see, use a, a fork, okay? And you press it through, it can go through easily. Okay, so this is done. All right, okay, thank you, Fiona. So you can see the glossiness of the gingo nuts. All right, it's very glossy, shiny, yes, and with a hint of sweetness. Not very sweet, but very light hint only. All right, okay, so Fiona to chew. Actually, I just want to show you, show show them the mm. color. It's so beautiful. <laughs> it's it's actually blue color, like the blue pea. Yeah, the yam, the yam, and the mm. uh, purple sweet potato is like the blue pea uh, water. Yeah. Wash it, we just pour away the water away. Then we bring it back in the uh, the yam. There you go. Mm. Okay. You put in everything. Yeah, steam okay. together. There's no type of Okay, remove the uh, pandan leaf. So we are going to add in our 400 grams of the steamed yam. Okay. I need to steal some. Yes. The sweet potato from you first. Yeah, because I uh, steam more. Uh, my portion here is uh, 400 grams of the uh, yam and 100 of the sweet uh, purple sweet potato. All right. So I'm going to give her more. Not for her to eat, but to add into her her cream for her shoe pastry. Yes, because by yeah. the time I mix to my with my white whipping cream, the color become very pastel. But I want to still want to see some colors, so I keep some purple sweet potato for it later. Cause she's a purple person. <laughs> yeah, I like to see some colors in it. Yeah, brighter, right? Yes. We feel happier. Also. Yeah, that's why we are also in pink, <laughs> right? Yeah. Why are we in pink apron today? Because of breast cancer awareness. Yeah, so uh, looks good, right? The pink apron. Yes, I love it. Okay, fifty-five degree. About there soon. Okay, after putting all the uh, yam and the uh, sweet potato, what uh, we have here is the uh, butter, uh, 50 grams of the uh, unsalted butter, sugar, 60 grams of the sugar, and 100 grams of the uh, milk.
So I'm going to cook it for uh, roughly about 5 minutes. Uh, 90 degrees. So you see, uh, Thermomix is so good. You can choose the uh, temperature. You don't have, you don't want it to boil because it's already cooked. So we just want to heat it up with the milk uh, added. We are having the uh, cow heads milk uh, again, you know, the Australian milk. Uh, and then we just have about speed uh, two. Yeah. Uh, back. Okay. So, you can continue yeah, with your task. Continue? Yeah, oh, your task okay. first. My the temperature is a bit more to go. Yeah. So uh, working with plants and uh, fishy, uh, you have to be patient. If it's too soft, put it back into the fridge. Right? If it's too hard, just let it come to soften a little bit. Manageable for you, right? Mm -hmm. So remember the custom that I'm talking about, remember to oil it, uh, put butter, grease it so that uh, it's for you to remove later on, alright? So what I'm going to do now, remember the, the spine that I cut it up. Okay, so I think it's still a little bit thick, so I want it to, uh, to be slightly uh, thinner a little bit. So you can just dust uh, on the mat or on the parchment paper, alright? And you can actually dance with the rolling pin. Just uh, roll it out gently a little bit. Okay, so you can see the thickness if I, I want it to be about 3 mm, okay, so this is about it, alright, mm. okay, so uh, you really want to fit in, how do you want, how do you fit in, okay, so you make sure you gas the bottom, okay, so that later is easy for you to remove, okay, put the ring on top of the uh, dusted uh, mat, Put it in, try to put it in the middle, okay? And then we are going to like flip inward and down, flip yes. inward and down, flip inward and down. Let it slowly drop it slowly in, drop yes. It in. Don't try not to it. use force. Yeah, no yeah. force, okay? Like I always say, be gentle. So when you, how you fit in nicely, you uh, fall forward, fall inward, and then push down, okay? So I'm going to show you. Fall inward and then push down. Fall inward, push it down. Fall. Down, four, push it down. Then you're able to okay. get a 90 degree at a, at a yeah, corner so there. Yeah, so it will sit nicely mm. at the bottom, right? It will flush very well. Okay, so what do you do with the rest? Just use a scraper, okay, and then cut it outward. Cut it, cut it, okay. So you have a nice straight edge. Yes, so you can adjust. Okay, that's it. Show that the bottom, the bottom, see? Yeah. Fit nicely. See? Yeah. So you won't have big gaps. In case if you dust too much flour, use a patient brush and then kind of like remove it, right? And then put it on the baking paper or your parchment paper. In case if you accidentally tear the pastry, mm. you have a low bang, you have a hole that do not be kanchiong. Yeah. You just take a small piece, like doing some patchwork, like a plaster, put it out and just press it in to patch it back. Okay. okay, so, so you continue with the rest. I will continue with my shoe because okay. it has already reached the temperature that I want. So now we are going to add the eggs in. Okay, so just let me mix the egg. We are going to add the eggs in through the hole here on the lid. We are going to add it in slowly so that the dough and the egg is well incorporated. So I will not set a timer for this. I will just set it straight to the speed. Three. Okay, so I add it in five times. Two. 
second time. So for school pastry, I do not need to worry that I will over mix the batter. I only worry if I add in too much egg into the batter. Because once you add in too much, you cannot come back with it. You have to do the whole thing again. Looking at my egg. <laughs> Okay, so we scrape down the side a bit. Let's mix for another 30 seconds. I mix for another 30 seconds to make sure that it's well blended first, then I will check the texture of the dough. Okay. So we can so check yours first now. 30 seconds, uh, if it's not what I want, it's not smooth enough, we will continue another mm. 30 seconds, alright? Wow! Very nice purple, yes. Okay, now let's check our shoe pastry. So this is how it is like. How do we check whether it's the correct texture or not? So we scoop up. We drop it. You see the edge? It's still very jagged. Can you see the jagged edge? That means it's not there yet. We have to add in a bit more egg. Another 30 seconds, speed 3. Looking good. It's not smooth enough, so I want to blend it and again mm. to have it a smoother texture. So I want to uh, I doing another one minute speed ten to get a smoother texture, right? Because uh, every time when you buy the uh, sweet potato and the yam, you get different kind of. Uh, Quality, all right. The texture is different. Still have a bit more jacket, so it still need a bit more. Egg.
to show them? Yeah, let me blend it a little bit. Why sometimes you need to add a bit more egg? Because the egg, every eggs are different. Some of them, they are a bit more runny. They have a bit more egg white. So it depends on what egg you use. So we have to eyeball the texture for the uh, shoe pastry. Let's see, oopsie. Wow, you want to show them the uh, texture now for the shoe pastry? Yeah. So what, what kind of texture you are looking for? The, the flowy, runny kind or the... Like a, a V shape. Yes, like a V shape, oh. but it doesn't drop immediately or it doesn't hold up too tight. And the edge have to be smooth. Oh. There is still it's still it's still a bit quite jagged actually, right? Okay. Yeah. So I uh, So I think today our egg a bit a bit too break out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have extended look at the um texture that I want. Look at it, how smooth it is, right? This is uh this this te texture is very good. So I'm just going to put on a, a ball to cool it. And I also would like to show you the uh, only paste, the texture, other than smooth. Look at that. Oops, sorry. Can you see? It's like a bit runny, but uh, don't worry because now it's hot, right? After when it cool down, it will thicken, all right? So if you want to uh, adjust your uh, texture, if you like it more smooth, you can add more uh, milk, right? There's a question uh, about the shoe pastry. If mm. it's runny, do you add more egg? If it's runny, you don't add it, you stop already. Yeah. I'm adding more egg now because it is not it's not flowy enough, it's not runny now, it's still a, it's still very thick. So when I pipe, I will, it will be very difficult for me to pipe and then it will not puff up as much as I want. Hey, you heat up the oven. We are almost there. So we are going to put in a little of water to pre-clean this uh, mixing bowl. Okay, so I'm looking for Okay, so to prevent uh, the top part to be dry Okay, uh, I'm going to cover with the uh, cling wrap Okay, so that the top will not have a dry film So when you cover, lift it up, use the pack of your palm to touch it, okay? Okay, look at how lovely the color is. Yeah. So we do not create a film on top, mm. right? Okay, my shoe pastry is done. I'm satisfied with the texture of it now. You want to show them again? Of course, this is the most important thing. See when you put it up. Can you see the difference in the side from the beginning and to now? You have a straight line. 
It's okay. like smooth, yes, but not the, too runny. Yeah, it's not too jagged, jagged like a yeah. like, like a knife like that. So it's very smooth at the side, and it can actually hold it right, mm. hold the V shape right. So this is a very important characteristic for true pastry. Okay, so I can pipe mine. Oh, so okay. please set the oven at two hundred degree. We have already preset it. Let me check. Hey, sorry. Yeah, let me click. Okay, well, Fiona, carry on with her shoe. I will carry on with my uh, my tart tart pastry. Earlier on, I showed you a, a piece, right? So I'll continue to show you the uh, second piece. All right. So lift it up. The butter is too much. Uh, no, you no. can use it. Okay. So as you can see, after a few minutes, it's already uh, a bit soft, eh? Okay. I want to use it like a glue. So same thing, fold inward, fold outward, fold inward, fold outward, and then fold downward again. Downward to kind of like let it sit to the bottom so that the edge will be flush well. So when you dust the bottom so that when you lift up, you can move, you will not stick yeah? your pastry base, you will not stick to the bottom. Okay, so you can okay. take a look, yeah, the base, how round and flush nicely. Okay, same thing, use your scraper, trim off. Okay, you can use a knife, but you don't have to use so many equipment and only have to wash so many uh, utensils, right? So you can then just uh, adjust again, adjust it, uh, but not try not to uh, touch it too much, our hands are warm. If let's say this part is too thin, you can actually always uh, touch up, okay? Touch up a little bit. So I have piped the sugar pastry batter into the piping bag. Do not be too greedy to put so much inside. Put what your palm can fit. Otherwise, you will have trouble holding, holding it. So I have pretty small hand, right? So that's why my bag is small. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Scissors. Scissors. So now you know how to roll the, put the dough into the tart mold. I shall show you how do you pipe shoe pastry. There's many ways we can do it. We can do the traditional style, like a puff, like a puff. I can do it like a Paris bread style in a circle. Or I can do it in an eclair, one wow. long rectangle. So there are three ways you can do it. So interesting, right? Yeah. You learn one door and then you can... Yeah, you can do many patterns. Yes. Not so boring, right? Yeah. <laughs> so have to be so rigid, like stick to <laughs> one type, right? Yeah, okay. So now I do the standard uh, traditional cream puff stuff. Hand tie tie. Steady hand. Steady, Steady hand. hand. Just put it on top. Do a circle. Later, we can put down the teeth. One more. Do not go up, down, up, down. If you go up, down, down, the when you put it into the oven, later the duck will form. If you do show pressure, you know, then the, the base, and then there will be another head on top. So now I do the eclair.
So you are going to show them a few varieties. Yes, a few varieties. Wow. So I'm sure everybody has your own favorite kind of shoe pastry, right? So you can choose the design that you like. Eclair style, the long one, or the round, or Paris brace. Mm. Oh, sure, I, can <laughs> <this> one. <laughs> I can try. <laughs> Swan. Is it Joan? <laughs> oh, Sandra. Sandra, you see Swan. Okay, I'll show you when you come to my house. <laughs> so, scoop what you need, what your hand can fit, because you need to have the grip down there when you do your piping. Push it down so that there won't be any air pocket. Twist it. I always like to give it a look at my hand for additional grips. So now I do the Paris press, which is a circle. So probably it's mm, can I can for space. Wow. Okay. Like what Fiona say, steady hands. <laughs> so on, shall I do so on? Okay, like one more Paris breast first. I have enough. In the mood for swan. Hmm? <laughs> if this doesn't come out nice, it'll become dark law. I like my tips to be clean. Okay, one more. Mm, here. So, uh, for my back to my pastry tart, once it's ready, right before we chill it in the fridge or freezer, poke some holes. Okay. So this is to prevent it from puffing up when you are bake because this uh, method I'm showing you today is uh, you don't require blind bakes because not many people has uh, pie weights that you need to use and then if you're going to make a lot, you need a lot of pie weights. So I'm showing you a simpler uh, method that requires you to chill, okay, but uh, no need to blind bake your pastry tart, okay, the tart shell, right? Eh? Thank you. I try, uh, I do the swan. But please don't quote me if you cannot come out like a swan, all right? <laughs> I don't think so, we have the time for all this, Speed right? game shape, what umbrella? You mean the, the honeycomb? <laughs> that one must do caramel next time, the next life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because now thermomix, we have the sugar stages, we can do the high temp, right? 
we can do our honeycomb. Do I have the small tips for the head? What do you need? Mm. Small tip. Small tip. No, I think I have right now. Is this okay? Your star, star tip? No. No? No, this is not mine. Okay, no space. All right, so we sprinkle some water. Water. Oh, give it additional boost for the steam. Oh, wow. Cool. Okay, we decorate some almonds. So we use water to press down the edge. Keep on set timer 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Alright, so in you go for 20 minutes. for 20 minutes yes at what temperature again at 200 degree okay so the shoe pastry uh 200 degrees mm. for 20 set. minutes right i must set oh. so we will uh you need to let the um uh, okay. paste to cool down before you use you look at that when you cover it's still very uh, smooth and glossy uh, top surface. You won't have uh, water condensation as well. Okay, you don't have water condensation and there's no dry film on the top, right? Alright, so I'm going to whip the cream for my shoe pastry. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I want to lighten it a bit, right? Yeah. So I yep. Okay. So once you cool down, you can just give it a little mix. Okay. Look at the texture here. Right. Compared to earlier on, it has uh, thickened slightly. Right. Mm. So is this is a very uh, good texture for the tart. But for Fiona, for her shoe uh, cream, she's going to add the. Uh, um, Passant Breton, the whipping cream? Yes, correct. Mm. So, okay, so, this is the, the one. amount that you need. Okay, just let me add in the... 
How much cream are you using today? I'm using 200 ml today. 200? Yes, 200 ml of whipping cream and 100 ml of the yam paste. I see. Sorry, 200 grams. <laughs> 200 grams of the whipping cream and then uh, 100 grams of the uh, oni paste, right? So, and other ingredients. Later on, she's going to add in the uh, additional uh, steamed uh, sweet potato for a darker shade. All right, she's going to add this in to get a darker shade. So we're going to whip these at two and a half minutes at speed three. Open up the MC so you're able to see. Once you hear the sound changes, your whipping cream is about done. I need to wash this. Let me check on you. Okay, what do you need to do? Oh, I need. How much do you need? Okay, this one we have how much? Fire, then we'll add it to this uh, setting pin now. Uh, the sound changes. Okay. How much do you need? Uh, make it to 100. 100. Yes, make it to 100. Okay. okay. They just help me blend it together with you. Blend it, huh? mm. So when you are whipping the cream, you have to use a butterfly whisk. Forgot to show. Oh, yeah, okay. use the butterfly whisk for whipping. Ooh, about there. So this is so this is a whipping cream. I do not want it to be stiff pig because I have to add in the um, yam. Otherwise, you will overbeat the cream and you will have butter after that. So just scrape it down. What else do you need? Scrape it. So I don't need to transfer it though. So we put it in. And then we continue mixing it for one minute and check speed three.
Okay, so after this has been cool, you can uh, put into piping bag. For this one, uh, we don't need any uh, piping tape, okay? So how you put it in, like holder, like the letter C, put in the cup, hold it. Wow, I see very nice pocket. Wow. Wow, it's a color, very uh, yes. li li lilac, right? So nice. Yeah, just give it a good mix. Remove the butterfly. Can you see the purple? Can still hold the you can still hold the form so it's all right we can pipe for speed tree um, mixing together after I add a yam I mix it for one minute with the butterfly still inside. Put a star in. Wow, I can't wait to try this. It looks so nice, the lilac color. I feel like licking it. Like I feel like licking it off my finger, but no, now we are on no, no. <laughs> I want to taste it. That is ready. Okay. These are some that I have, we have pre-made because it takes 20 minutes in the oven. So we just have to slice it in half for the eclair. So one of the characteristics of tissue pastry, how you know when it's done. Firstly, you smell the fragrance of the good butter from the mm. oven. You see the color change to golden brown and it's very light and the bottom is hollow. So if you get all these, your tissue pastry should be there. So once you cut it open, you will see inside. Perfect, right? Yes. yes. That's where you got a hole to pipe your feelings in. Yes. There's a base, I can see it. Okay. Oh, I think the other way, right? Hmm? Oh, the other way. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, yeah. Uh. It will remove the nozzle.
Sim. And then we sprinkle with some icing sugar. So if you want, you can also melt your own chocolate using the thermomix at 50 degrees. Then you can actually dip the chocolate, uh, turn, dip the eclair on top with chocolate. All right, this is our first. Our shoe pastry with oily feelings. Yummy! Ooh. So this is uh, already uh, been uh, baked this morning. So while it's chilling because uh, we don't have time to show you after bake. So after bake will be 15 to 18 minutes at 180 degrees. Um, depends on your oven, okay? Uh, until a bit of uh, golden brown, okay? The bottom will look like this, okay? Right? Okay? And then you can just use this, the uh, oni paste, all right? So for this, I'm not going to use any uh, piping tape, it doesn't matter, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, you don't even have to need piping bags, it's just that piping bag is easier to fill in the hard shell, right? You can use a spoon, doesn't matter, right? Okay? Okay, just basically just to fill up the gap, okay? Doesn't matter. Stop it. Uh, okay. I stop again. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So while I'm piping this, uh, Fiona next is going to show us how uh, a bonus, a bonus drink. What is the bonus drink, Fiona? You're, you're going to do. Wow, it's blueberry smoothie. Wow. Again, blueberry has so much uh, antioxidant, right? Yes. Okay. Today we are using frozen. Blueberry. Let me get it from the freezer. Okay. So I'm going to add in this. I'm going to show you how we blend it. Let's go back to the scale. So I'm going to need. 100 gram of blueberries. Remember to tart it, yeah? Okay. And add in 400 grams of cowhead milk. So we just need to blend it. So Thermomix, we have this blending function, it's a preset function. Let's look at the orientage, oops. Okay, blend. For 30 seconds, speed it. That's all you need.
you only need 30 seconds for a homemade smoothie. So the tux is ready. Okay, so uh, optional for you to garnish with the uh, mint leaf. There you go. <laughs> so this is our blueberry smoothie using cow head milk and blueberries. We have our Oni tart today and also our Oni shoe pastry. Thank you for joining us. I hope you have an enjoyable afternoon with us. I hope you learned something from our live sessions, sharing session today also. So um, if you Thermomix stock is running low, right? I heard. Oh, out of stock. So not right now. It's out of stock already. So if you want to grab one before Christmas, because Christmas party is yeah, Christmas is coming to soon. Place your order yes. Soon. So you can contact your advisor, place your order soon, so you can get it by Christmas. Thank you, and we'll see you again. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.